You're listening to Natural Resources University. This episode features Working Wild You, hosted by Dr. Jared Beaver and Alex Few. We have a chronically depredating wolf pack for the last four to five years, the Chess Nimnus pack, and it's devastating to the livestock producers out here. Welcome back to The Working Wild You, a show where we explore what it means to share the working landscape with people and wildlife. From the crossroads of culture and science, I'm Alex Few. And I'm Jared Beaver. And you just heard from Tom Berkmeyer. Third generation rancher out in the Chest Nimnus country. We run cow-calf pairs on uh, public lands and the rest on private. The Chess Nimnus country he's referring to, that's in Oregon. The northeast corner to be exact. This area tucked up in Wallowa County has it all. Mountains, high prairies, rivers, montane forest, abundant elk, and rangelands to support livestock production. And wolves. And yes, quite a few wolves. During this season, we've been spending a lot of time in the northern Rockies, in the states where gray wolves first returned to the west, whether by reintroduction or recolonization. But it just so happens that dispersing wolves from Idaho dinned in both Eastern Oregon and Washington in the same year, 2008. And with different geographies, different management goals, and different politics defining these states, wolves entered a new push-pull of politics and management. That's right. There's a really sharp divide between the big cities, Seattle and Portland on the coast, west of the mountains, in the vast eastern part of the state, which is dominated by agricultural land. So these states are basically split geographically and somewhat politically down the middle. And wildlife managers in Oregon? And Washington. Are trying to strike a tricky balance. They're looking to manage the impacts of wolves on livestock producers in the eastern half of the state, while looking to address the desires of many folks in the western half of the state. Where the cities are who want to see wolves return to much of their habitable range. Basically, state wildlife biologists are just getting yelled at from both sides of the issue. It's tough to make anyone happy. And while incorporating these multiple values is admirable, managers are running into challenges. A working middle path is hard to come by in a situation this polarizing. I think that the problem, honestly, is it comes down to politics. There's just groups that are tugging people from both sides into that space that creates, you know, this rural urban divide. We're really just increasing the divide between everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just causing a lot more stress. It's causing distrust, a lot of distrust. Um, It's causing increasing tension. And I think it's definitely increased a lot of like on the down low wolf killings. Um, I think if we had a more open system, I think if we were following the wolf plan, I think if we had options for, um, you know, lethal take of wolves that were causing problems, I don't think you would see entire packs wiped out with poison. As you can hear, the situation in these states has become quite tense recently. Eight wolves were poisoned in Oregon in December of 2021, a symptom of declining tolerance towards their presence in some parts of the state. To be clear, this has not been associated with livestock producers. Also, there's currently an $11,500 reward for information leading to the identification of the person responsible for shooting and killing an alpha female in the Lookout Mountain Pack on October 2nd, 2022. And today, we're going to talk about what it looks like to manage and live with wolves within states experiencing the push-pull of a real urban-rural divide. And after the break, we'll be taking you to Wallawa County, where Tom and his wife Kelly have been giving it their all to find ways to live with wolves that have been causing them 